what we're going to use is the chopping board as a way of, of learning this and really understanding it. So I'm just making a cube into a rectangle and with this chopping board there's actually a bit of an angle um, of the chopping board coming out a little bit like so. Okay, so this, yeah, this is our basic cube. And if I press the smooth mesh preview and subdivide it, what we get is a curvature of the uh, geometry underneath. And how, how I like to um, uh, think about this is you take these vertices, uh, basically three. So this one, two, three, and the curvature sort of spans that area around there. Okay. So what, what we're trying to achieve in this is we're trying to make this look uh, more realistic and more natural and have the edges sort of round. Okay. Now, there is another technique we could use, and this this would be fine for this project, but it doesn't demonstrate and help you learn how to use the smooth or how subdivision works and where to um, do all that stuff. So, but uh, if we were to do this and we didn't need to learn that stuff, we could just come up to bevel and add a bevel to that. And it basically does the same thing. Let me just turn on. Uh, wireframe unshaded so we can see what's going on and yeah we can have uh, different segments in here um, we can have different fractions so we can make it smaller um, and it's all super even and it looks really good but we're not going to use the uh, bevel tool for this we're going to do it manually just as as practice and understanding so back in the top view um, and I'm just going to delete the history, get rid of that node. You don't, don't have to delete the history. Okay, so if I press uh, 2 on the keyboard, we see the smooth mesh preview. And yeah, what we're trying to achieve is a curvature that is isolated just to this area here, right? So it's just around there. So if we take the multi-cut or the insert edge loop tool and create an edge loop here and here, then we have these three vertices that are controlling the curve. So the curve should be isolated to this space here. Um, and if we press, press the uh, two key, we see that preview. And we can see it sort of isolated. So what we need to do is just go around and do that to each of the corners. Oops. And even to the other end. A bit hard to see on that end, so I'll just go back to perspective. And I'll just do it manually. Like so, and I need to do it on the side as well. So that looks pretty good. So now when I press uh, one again, I can come up here and use just the smooth and now smooth that geometry, add that subdivision. And if I want to, I can actually come in and shift double click on each of these edges, the edges that aren't really influencing the curvature. Like so, and uh, use the control delete. So if I just press delete, they'll get rid of the edges, but it leaves the vertices behind. So. I want to use edit. Uh, where are we? Sorry. Uh, 
delete edge slash vertex or control delete. And then if we go into vertice mode, we can see that we've got rid of those vertices. Uh, all right, so I'll just hide that. I, yeah, so the shortcuts for hide are control H to hide selected or shift H to show selected. And you can select it in the outliner as well. Um, so that's a, so I've got these objects here. There's another option that we have as well, which is a, a sorry, I'm just going to move this to the center. And uh, is control one, which isolates selected. So it hides everything else except for the object that you've got selected. And then if you control one again, everything comes back. But yeah, so here's, here's our knife. So you should have something similar to this. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same. Again, if I want to see the wireframe here, I can click on wireframe unshaded um, so we can see what's going on. And if we use the smooth mesh preview to check out the subdivisions, we can see that, you know, uh, it's looking pretty good, but there are some issues. So first issue being this this back area, it's not it's not being controlled to these points around here. So yeah, we first need to add a subdivision there, which is going to control those points. And yeah, we might go to the side view as well. We could have it round like that, that would be fine, but I actually want to make it more square with nice round corners. And so there I've got those that all sort of working. And yeah, I'll do the same for this top section. I do like the, whoops, I do like the curvature on here. So I'm actually going to introduce an extra uh, loop going through it so that I can then take those vertices and just move that out. So I've got a rounded knife at the top. But at the moment, this is like, you know, uh, both sides are pretty thick. So what I need to do, I'm just going to take it off uh, my smooth mesh preview and go in and select just all these vertices, just holding down shift and click and drag to marquee select. And then scale them all in. So I've got the nice sharp blade happening. So yeah, smooth mesh preview again. That looks pretty good. I'm even happy with this end bit, although I think these guys should be smoother as well. And so yeah, once I'm happy with the smooth mesh preview version, I can commit using just the smooth key. And for this one, a subdivision of one is heaps, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we're probably not gonna get closer to the object than about this far from the camera. Even even if we're this close, it still looks perfectly smooth and you know you can't see the uh, hard edges on the profile so much. I think I've mucked up the end bit a little bit, but that's okay. It's quite thick. <laughs> it's all right. Um, and yeah, it's not super even, but that's okay. So with that, um, you know, this knife is pretty much done and everything that's there is pretty much influencing the object. So yeah, I'll show you that without the uh, cage on it so we can sort of see what's going on. And that looks good. Do the fork. The fork's a bit more complicated, but it's pretty much exactly the same. So yeah, with a fork, you want to get that sort of curvature, the bucket, to really look, look like a fork. So yeah, if I press the smooth mesh preview to see what it's looking like, again, I need to fix in the, the back here and I'll also do the sides like so. And yeah, I probably want to do the ends as well. So let's just go to the top view. So I'm just holding down space bar, clicking in the middle and selecting top. Now, uh, this, this is the cool thing about the multi-cut tool is if you click and drag, uh, click once on the side and then click again, 
you get a line and if you hold down shift it sort of restrains it to 90 and if I let go of that now and press enter it actually cuts all the way through the objects which is uh, which is good for me here because I've made everything the same um, so as in sorry they're all quads uh, which is good now I can even go in and fix these up and taper them in a little bit or if I put press the B key I'll use the soft select and change the radius so that they sort of all taper in a little bit together and yeah I think that's pretty close oh yeah no I probably should add some edge loops in here as well so again to make them all perfectly even I'll just use the multi cut tool cut through just above where I want it to curve and that's it Okay, so this fork now would be considered, you know, done. However, if we have a look at it, we can optimize this um, quite a bit. So this happens on a lot of objects. It's the idea that the edge loops run all the way through the object. So what I'm talking about is these edges. See how they're like running all the way through the object? And that, that's fine, you know, for this at this stage. But if we wanted to be more advanced, what we'd want to do is minimize as much as possible edge loops. And one way we can do that is to actually run the edge loops back and terminate back in on themselves rather than ha having them come all the way through the object. So to do this what we need to do is find two edge loops that we can sort of run back in on itself and we sort of, you know, start to uh, work out how they might run through. And what I'm doing now is, oh, I better do that again. I can actually, with the multi-cut tool, I can actually click on a vertice and then click in the middle of a face and it'll cut that face. And what I want to do is go to the other side and then cut Cut it. This is like an advanced thing, right? Cut, cut that through. So, did I do that right? I'm going to do that again. I feel like that's not on the. Oh yeah, that's it. So what this means is I can take these two edges and get rid of them and it's not affecting the loops which is kind of cool and yeah so now you can see how these edge loops aren't running all the way through the object um, and they're being terminated in on themselves which is cool so yeah that's fully optimized all right let's move on to the, the bowl here um, and if you use the insert edge loop, oops, I can isolate that curvature to the top area. I don't mind it really round at the top. That looks fine. But yeah, I can also, uh, at the bottom, Now, one thing you'll notice, though, if you try and create an edge loop in this middle area, you don't, you can't do it, okay? It's because they're all triangles um, and edge loops will only go through quads. So this area here is all quads. That's all fine. So how, how do we add the edge loop into this section? What we can do is we can select the middle vertice and this is how I like to do it. Uh, you can go up to select and uh, 
it's where is it convert selection there it is um to face so to to face or control f11 is the shortcut okay and then they'll select the face or what what i do is hold down control key and i just select to face so it becomes like a shortcut um, and then to face again or control f11 is probably a good shortcut for that so that means I've, I've selected that whole face so if i go control e to extrude and scale i'm actually doing the same thing i'm creating an edge loop around the edge so g i can even push that down a bit g reactivates it bring, bring it in like so so now i've got a nice tapered um, lots of nice detail on this bowl that looks all good so yeah once i'm happy happy with that smooth mesh preview go back to normal object mode and go smooth so what's what's kind of cool is you, you can get to a stage where let's take let's make that bowl again go into object mode just scale it down i should make it the same size similar size so um if i select the vertice to face to face what you can do is you can turn smooth mesh preview on and use the extrude tool and just start extruding out using the g key where you want these uh, edge loops to be and g and so you kind of like engineer it as you're extruding understanding where um, the edge loops go and, and so forth i should have gone up a bit more but that's okay um, scale it in this is more of a thinner bowl g scale it in and yeah so you can you know apply the edge loops as you as you model might come back i should have gone up here more and now g extrude so i'm creating an edge loop and then creating a, a new one g and then uh, creating a new one and then scaling it in like so g and extrude it down again so pressing g again and going down all right so there we there we go but yeah we can still go in and add additional detail um, to it as well if we if we've made a mistake or if we want to add some extra information in there and again we can great grab those edge loops um oh one thing might not be aware of is uh, let's say i want to move an edge loop uh, on a surface once i've dropped dropped the edge loop i can just move it you know it's not a problem up and down um, but sometimes if i wanted to move it on this inner service surface it's not it's moving just in the world space right but what you can do is go uh, transform constraint right and if we turn that on to surface when we move it it's moving it along the surface so that can be quite handy in this situation so yeah we'll just go one and now smooth and yeah we've got our, our bowl as well i think i like the first one better <laughs> 